Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Hope you guys had a great 4th of July weekend. If I haven't met you before, my name is Cam Colquitt, and I serve as the Director of Campus Outreach at Rivermont. Campus Outreach exists as both a mission to the church at Rivermont and a mission of the church at Rivermont. And what I mean by that is we, uh, we exist both to serve the college community at the church and to also extend as an evangelistic missional arm on local and regional college campuses. This coming Sunday, I'll be preaching at Rivermont and share a bit more about my story and how the missional arm of Rivermont and Campus Outreach were instrumental in God saving me and bringing me to faith in Christ. It's a privilege to share just a brief thought from God's Word with you this morning. The passage we're considering is Mark 9, chapters 33 through 37. This passage takes place on the way to Jerusalem. And along the way, the disciples, Jesus' 12 closest followers, strike up a conversation. Jesus overhears it. And he engages them about the question. In verse 35, in response to the disciples' lack of response, Jesus says this. Verse 34 tells us that the disciples were discussing which of them was the greatest. And Jesus sat down and said, If anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. And then Jesus takes a child, and he sets the child before them, and takes the child in his arms, and says to the twelve, Whoever receives one such child like this in my name, receives me. Jesus is contrasting and the, the text is presenting a conflict between two understandings of greatness. Greatness according to Jesus and greatness in the eyes of the world. This passage takes place on a road and that's significant. You could almost say this passage presents us with two different roads to greatness. Jesus' road to greatness is going to culminate and climax in Jerusalem on a hill outside the city on a cross. And the disciples are convinced that the moment of climax or culmination is going to be in the city on a throne. And they're wondering who's going to sit on his right and on his left. And to these men, Jesus says, you have no idea what you're asking about and what you're considering. When we get there, someone will be on my right and on my left, but not at all in the way that you expect. You misunderstand true greatness. Jesus says greatness is lastness. It's service. It's not judged by the position you occupy or your status in society, but rather by how many people you serve. And not just how many people you serve, but the type of people you serve. That's the image of a child. Sometimes in Jesus' ministry, he'll use a child to demonstrate purity of faith and innocent trust. It's not so much what's going on here. Rather, Jesus is using a child because of the role a child occupied in Jewish society. It wasn't until a boy was about 13 years old that he advanced to a level of significance or status in society. In taking this young boy and welcoming into his arms, Jesus is saying this, True greatness is opening up your arms, opening up your heart, and embracing those who have nothing to offer, who bring to you nothing but their need, who present nothing but an opportunity to serve. That's true greatness. And friends, isn't this exactly what Jesus has done for us? Hasn't He welcomed those who occupy no status, no position, who bring nothing to offer, who contribute nothing but our sin? What Jesus has done on the cross is just as He did for this child. He stretched out His arms, and He has embraced us in Himself. And His arms remain open and outstretched to any today who would come to Him in repentance and faith. And if you and I have experienced the loving embrace of God in and through Jesus Christ, the challenge and encouragement of this passage is who are we to ever not open up our arms to others? There's three senses in which we can apply this passage. On the one hand, we ought to just want to be great in the eyes of God. We ought to be relatively unconcerned with how others view us and consider us, so long as we're great in the eyes of God. On the other hand, we ought to recognize that oftentimes greatness advances. The impact of greatness is almost invisible. In the image of the child, this didn't shake the town, and yet it impacted the town. Greatness is advanced behind closed doors. It makes small advances. It's like the mustard seed that starts small and yet has a massive impact. And on the other hand, there can be great strides for greatness. I imagine many date nights, Friday night or over the weekend, were spent watching the release on Disney Plus of the musical Hamilton. One of the great messages of Hamilton is this. The story of our country, the sacrifices that have been made, the men and women who rose to the occasion is now handed to you and me. The torch is passed. Well, in this passage, Jesus is passing the torch to his 12 men. And as it were, that torch is now passed down from the hands of those men to Christians throughout history and on into our day. And the question we ought to be asking ourselves 
is what can you and I do? How can we pursue lowliness, humility, and service in such a way that makes great strides for greatness in our lives, our families, our communities, our cities, our churches, our country, and even the world? Let us pursue greatness by pursuing humility today, just as Jesus has done.